Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all doing really, really well. Today I am going to film a little kind of summer reading plan slash summer TBR video. I don't ever really film um, TBR videos. Sorry, I feel I've had a lot of caffeine today. I feel extremely sick. So why not follow that up with a non-caffeinated fizzy drink? I'm addicted to carbonated drinks. Yeah, I never really film TBR videos um, just because I don't read like that many books a month. I don't know, 10 books. So then if I just talk through like those 10 and then repeat myself once I've read them. I don't know for me, I'm like, is that very interesting? Plus sometimes I don't know what I'm gonna read or maybe I'm doing a vlog where it's like a secret TBR. Um, so yeah, it's never really been a thing I do, but I think it's kind of interesting thinking about like the whole summer. So we're like, what, mid June now, thinking about like rest of June, July, August, and maybe just some ideas, thoughts, possibilities, shall we say, of things that I might read over summer. Uh, and yeah, I thought I had like a few things to mention on that. It might be interesting to kind of think about, yeah, almost like intentions versus what I end up reading. I feel like the summer always feels like it's gonna last a lot longer when you're going into it. I'm like, oh my God, yeah, this whole season of summer. But then it always just absolutely flies by and watch me not read one book that I mentioned in this video and read completely different things. But yeah, that is what we're gonna do today. I don't have too many summer plans. Like I think it's gonna be a pretty chill summer. I have already been on holiday, like very briefly went to Mallorca um, which you'll know if you watched my, did I mention my wrap up maybe? So I have like been abroad this year already for a couple of nights, well, one and a half nights. Our big holiday this year is gonna be in September because it's Alex's 30th birthday, even though I'm not even that young, but that just doesn't feel right to me. So yeah, we're gonna do a big holiday in September. So summer should be quite chill. We've got things like a wedding to go to and we're going to a music festival in Scotland. And yes, hopefully some nice like homey vibe, fun things to do, but I'm not going on like a big, holiday where you know like you pack like seven books and you read them all in a week that's that's the dream right but yeah not doing that this summer but should still be like around a lot and hopefully be able to read a fair amount uh so yeah i thought i would talk through some thoughts i've been having about potential summer reading plans some of these books i have with me which i'll show some of them i don't um but yeah let's just talk about my potential possibility summer reading TBR. So when I was thinking about like things I might want to read, what I might get to this summer, I realized it's been ages since I've read a Agatha Christie book. You might know that in 2021, I did this like Poirot project where I was going to read a different Poirot book, like in order once a month, every month. Yeah. Read one every month basically. Um, and I did it for the first, I think about six months. And then I just stopped and haven't read a Poirot book since. I think the last one I read was maybe July. Actually, if you watched my birthday book haul, the beautiful book hotties, my lovely friends, got me like loads of Agatha Christie books, which was honestly just the best present ever. They like messaged Alex and been like, find out which one she's got. Um, so Alex was like secretly taking a photo and they basically got me, I think 10 or 12 of the next books in the series, which is just so good. Cause I always say like, my dream is just to like have the collection there and then I can just dip in. Whereas before I was having to like buy them every time I wanted to read one and then every month remember to like buy a Poirot. Um, so that should have made it easy for me. But then like I say, I haven't read one and I really want to because I absolutely love Agatha Christie. I love Poirot books. They're like really comfort reads for me. But I think maybe, not like pressure, but I was putting like, I don't know, maybe it's not the best to be like, you have to read one every month and just pick them up whenever. But I definitely want to get back to that um, and this summer seems like a good time so I'm pretty sure the next one yeah so the last one I read I love it on the back of these it has like the list and it highlights that one which is very very helpful so the last one I read was Murder in Mesopotamia and this is Cards on the Table which is the next one and I just love these editions honestly having that stack there just brings me so much joy I think there's not a huge amount to say about Poirot books they're just fun and super easy to read and I love Poirot I love because I'm reading them in order like kind of picking up on the whole like series dynamics of you know between Poirot and Hastings and that kind of thing so yeah this is the next one I hope to read that soon but maybe I'll read more over the summer maybe not I want to watch Death on the Nile the film but I want to read it before and I think that's well I can tell you two more after this and then Death of the Nile so maybe if I get like really into shooting through my poires I'll be able to watch it but yeah hopefully can go back to Miss Ag Agatha this summer. Also we have the Booker Prize obviously for this year which I'm not exactly sure when it comes out I think it comes out in July let me check. Long list is announced on the 26th of July so I guess that's like towards the middle end of the summer um and yeah I'll be interested to see like if I want to read like not all of the long list, but like some of the books on that. I think then the shortest comes out in September because last year I really didn't do much book reading at all. I It was quite an interesting list. I feel like there was a lot of stuff on there that was a little bit less well known and that was always really fun. I, I just love seeing prize lists because even if you don't read the books, it's just such a great way of like getting to hear about new books. 
and I just don't know I just always love the thrill of like any sort of price even if I don't care about it I'm like just I want to see those lists I've read quite a lot of the women's prize books this year so when the long list came out I read a few of that then I read the whole short list which I've done a vlog of and I did just really enjoy that like I like that feeling of reading books that everyone else is reading and kind of talking about it and I think even though like I say I might not have heard of the book of books that's a great way to just like try that so I'm not making any promises because obviously it really depends on what the list is. I think last year I'd read two of the books on that list before before the list was announced and then I didn't read any more but I have since read like The Great Circle. Um, but yeah, I'd be interested to actually be like, okay, let's really look at this list, pick some ones that really sound interesting to me and then read them. My issue with it, which you might not be surprised to hear, is that I just hate buying hardbacks so much. They're just expensive, they're cumbersome. Like I've said this so many times, but also like, especially if I've never heard of these books, if I'm like getting an entryway into these books because they're on the book along list, and then that's like quite a big like investment or risk to take to spend. You know, say you buy four off the long list, you're potentially spending like 60, 70 quid on those books, like depending how expensive the hardbacks are. So that's the kind of thing that does just put me off a bit. And like if they're new releases, as soon as they're on the book along list, everyone's like requesting requesting them off the publisher. And I don't know. So maybe there might be a few like paperbacks or books that are nearly out or less expensive. I think the really good thing about the international book of this year is that because so many of them are from independent publishers, like they don't get published in hardback, they're just in paperback. And so I read quite a few of the books on the International Booker long list, long list this year and definitely some of the books I'd like never heard of before but just sounded really interesting and because I could get them for cheap, like comparatively, I read them and then I had an amazing time. Like I discovered Elena Knows by Claudia Pinheiro, which I absolutely loved. I got Cursed Bunny, which I'd never heard of. I had heard of like Heaven and Paradise. I'd never heard of Love in the Big City by Sang Young Park, which I ended up really loving. So that's my reservation. I would love to be able to be like, okay, here's the book list and I'm gonna do something really fun where I'm gonna pick my books that sound interesting. I'm gonna read them, maybe vlog it, but it just depends because as much as I love you all and love making the good content, I'm not spending like hundred pounds on hardback books. So very interested to see what that list will be. I'm really excited for when people start putting out their like predictions and stuff like Kieran, obviously and Sarah from Freshly Read Books. I just always love their booker content. So yeah, that's an interesting one, we'll see. I would like to read some booker books this year, especially more than I did last year, but I guess it really depends on what the books are. And then we have my kind of own book club stuff. So I do my Dublin Murder Squad book club series, which I started last August. And I now am on the last book. So I've read five, the first five Dublin Murder Squad books. Well, reread them because I'd read them all already. This is a crime series by Tana French, who is the love of my life, my favorite crime writer ever. Yeah, so I'm onto The Trespasser now, which I think I'm gonna read this month. And then the vlog will post in July. And a couple of people have asked like, what are you gonna do after that? Are you gonna do the standalones? And I would love to reread the standalones, which are The Witch, Elm and The Searcher. Um, I'd really, really like to reread them. Partly just because I'm manifesting Tana announcing another book like why is it taking so long I feel like she was in quite a consistent like every two year publishing schedule Witch Elm came out I think early 2019 The Searcher came out late 2020 and now nothing not a whisper and it's stressing me out I need another ton of French book I love her so much so I would really like to reread them um particularly The Witch Elm because I read that in 2018 so I got a proof so it's been a while and also like it is I think one of my favorites from her and it's pretty long and I really enjoy doing those videos and like chatting to the people who are reading them in the comments and then the searcher although I read it like more recently because it's less of like a mystery in my opinion there is still a mystery to it but it's much more like about the atmosphere and the character that makes me want to reread it even more because it's not I don't know so hinged on like a mystery of which I know the answer to not that I found that with the ton of French books but yeah I'm just really interested to reread that as well but I just don't know whether how I want to do that um the vlogs are fun um, and it's been great for the Dublin Motor Squad, se Squad series like I say I've had such a good time and I've loved introducing people to that series and chatting to everyone but I'm just not sure that the vlog like that would work for like those individual vlogs would work for the witch elm and the searcher I guess I could maybe vlog like reading them both back to back but then I also kind of like to eke out my Tana because I don't want to just like use it all up I'm really not sure I'd like to hear especially you've been joining in with the Dublin Motor Squad book club it would be great to hear from you and then I'm also thinking because we're kind of like at the end of the book club about whether I want to continue that with some other stuff whether that be maybe starting like a new crime series I'd be really interested actually to start a new crime series I do have the first Karen Slaughter 
I think he's called Will something, her detective book called Triptych, which my dad read and really liked and gave it to me. And I've been saying like every month in my head, oh, I'm gonna read that this month and I don't. And I finished the Kristin Lepionka Roxanne Weary series and loved it. I think this summer I will probably finish reading the Nikki French Frida Klein series because I switched to listening to them on audio after I read the first one physically and I've loved that experience. I think the audiobooks are so well done. I recently finished the Friday, so it's like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then another one. Um, so I have like three left, but I think when I'm in an audio mood, I'll go through them quite quickly and I think that is kind of like my priority, ooh, my priority for audiobooks from now on, basically until I finish that series. So there's a good chance I'll finish that series this summer, which I guess is also a good place to mention that here. Just kicked my tripod over. Yeah, I can definitely see myself listening to the audiobooks a lot, like in the gym, on walks, and maybe get that finished. So do I want to start another crime series? Do I make that the book club? I just don't know that the vlogs are like the best way to do it because it has such a limited audience. Not that that massively bothers me, but like to put, especially if the book isn't very long, at least with the Tana French ones, they're super, super long and they're rereads. So there's a lot for me to kind of say. Um, so I'm not sure like a vlog would be right for that or do I just do a book club completely differently and maybe we have a way of picking a book together every month and then I don't know do I do a vlog for that do I do like a live show which I've never done before I'd be really interested if you have been like book clubbing along with me to get your guys feedback on that and what you think might be fun I think it would be nice to keep something up where we're like reading stuff together because I have really enjoyed that but I'm just not sure the best way to go about that so yeah let me know what you think and yeah so series like I say I think I want to finish the Nikki French Frida Klein series this summer or like fairly soon and I also have a few more like kind of series I don't read a load of series but stuff that I just kind of want to draw a line under so it's been ages since I read a last book that I read in the Elena Frente Neapolitan novels so I read the third one in 2020 I think which is ages ago and I still haven't read the fourth one I don't know why I'm like putting it off so much but I think I really like reading Frente in the summer because those books especially like set in Naples they're just so gorgeous and atmospheric I kind of want to challenge myself I don't actually own the book yet and I need to buy it quickly or buy it second hand so that I have the Europa old edition that matches my current series even though I do like the new ones so I think I'm going to definitely challenge myself to make sure I read the fourth Neapolitan novel this summer so I can get that series finished up because I do really love it so yeah I guess that's another book if we're talking about like books I'm tentatively putting on my TV off this summer I'd say Cards on the Table the fourth one in the Elena Ferrante series that's another one that we're putting on so we've got two like books that you can hold me accountable for so far. I also want to do some really fun vlogs this summer. As I mentioned in my wrap up, like I feel a little bit out of the loop with vlogs. I am actually filming one at the minute and I'm really enjoying it and I'd like to do some really fun ones this summer. I have a little list of notes on my phone of some good kind of secret TBR vlogs. One that I really, really want to do is, which I could potentially use your help with, is do a reading books that apparently have really good twists, like thrillers with really good twists or really shocking endings. Maybe reading three or four of those and then seeing if I am that shocked. So I have a couple of books that I know I've heard people talk about a lot for having this amazing twist are on my list, but please let me know. This way you can help me out in the comments of this video what the thriller or like crime book that you've read that has like the best twist in or that you think would work really well for that video i would love to know that and that would be really helpful because yeah that's a vlog that i definitely want to do hopefully this summer i feel like summer is a good time for thrillers like i mean it's always a good time for thrillers i love reading them but yeah summer feels like a good time to do that so let me know if you have any recommendations for me for that another vlog that i really want to get to because i've been saying i'm gonna do for ages is reading like books that my sister enjoyed that i'd never read or heard of like and because usually it's me giving her book seeing what I think of them so I have two one is one I bought her which I haven't read which is oh I haven't got them with me must I go by Yun Lee I think it is and then another one called Neighbor George which I'd never heard of she really enjoyed them both um but then I was like oh I kind of want a third one so me and Liv were talking like trying to find another book that she's read which I hadn't heard of or didn't give her and we couldn't but she's currently reading one and she I saw the other night and she was like okay leave this with leave this with me because if I end up really enjoying this book you can add it to your list and that can become that vlog because I'm just a weirdo who likes vlogs to be three books ideally so yeah that's another one that I'd like to do this summer but yeah I've got some good vlog ideas I think and that's definitely something that I want to do this summer but for the most part you won't know what those books are because I think that makes it more fun when I post the vlog. I feel like I haven't read many new releases this year apart from I guess the women's prize books it's just 
I don't know, I feel like I've been slightly out of the loop thinking about or just looking into like the books that are coming out. Like I haven't filmed a, these are the books that are coming out in the next six months. And yeah, I don't know, I haven't really put that much attention on it. And I even had a look for this video to be like, are there books that are coming out that I'm really excited about? And I feel like there probably are, but I don't know enough about them that they're like in my head. I feel like there was a few really anticipated books this year that I've already read. I managed to get proofs of like the Atessa Moshfeg, which I think comes out this month, but I read earlier in the year, the new Sadie Jones. Also, I think actually I filmed this video, which was like my 10 most anticipated books of the year at the end of last year. And I'm really like, I've read most of them. I think I think most of them were in the first half of the year. So I have a couple that I'll mention in a minute, but then there's only one that's like unreleased or I don't have a copy of, which is coming out in September. So I feel like I'm kind of on top of that. The ones that I haven't read yet, I still haven't read um, You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Quake Mezzi. Quake Mezzi is like absolutely one of my favorite authors of all time. This is a romance. So this is definitely one that I wanna read this summer because it's like a summery romance and I love the author. So this feels really fitting. So this is like, ooh, this is like a definite and that was on that list. Also on that list was Nine Lives by Peter Swanson, which I'd like to read. I think I'm going to do another vlog that's like reading my most anticipated books of the year. And I'm going to read these two and maybe also actually, again, I forgot to pick it up, People Person by Candy Scotty Williams, because these, those three were all in that list of like my 10 most anticipated books. And when I've read those three, I'll be on top of that, apart from the one that isn't out until September. I hate when I get proofs and then I don't read them until like they're already like way out like years later. So I have a couple of others here as well that are potentials. I'm not like signing myself up to it, but I've got like three proofs here that are coming out this summer or have already come out that I think it would be a good idea for me to try and read. So this is Is This Love by C.E. Riley. This is published by Serpent's Tale. I think it comes out in July. Oh, in August actually. It sounds really interesting. It's about the breakdown of a relationship, Jay and Jay's wife. And I think we get both of their kind of perspectives of it in the days, weeks and months after the marriage collapses. So we have Jay's perspective, but also their wives, their wife's diaries, which I think is really interesting. I like that setup. Also, apparently the point is that you don't know if Jay, you don't know Jay's gender, um, like intentionally. And it's meant to make us think about gender dynamics in marriage and relationships. So it's not too long. It's published by Serpent's Tale, who I absolutely love. Uh, it's a debut. So I'd really like to get to this one. I also have Wildfires by Sophie J, which I think actually came out in May. This is a book, I think it's set in Canada, but it's about like Trinidadian experience as well. So it says, the story of my family is one of po potholes and cracks that I've tried to fill over the years for no reason other than my own need to neatly pen a narrative. Apparently it's a powerful lyrical novel that explores family, the ways we mourn, and why we avoid the things that can save us. This is another debut. I absolutely love Trinidadian literature, or I have in the few books that I've read. And yeah, so I'm really, really interested to read this. I haven't heard anyone speak about it, but it sounds very up my street. So that's another one that it would be good to get to. And then finally, another proof that I have is Briefly A Delicious Life by Nell Stevens. This is published by Picador. It might already be out. And this sounds really interesting, maybe less me, but I have it and it's interesting. So I kind of want to pick it up. It's set in Mallorca, which again is giving that like holiday feeling. As I say, I've been to Mallorca already this year. I absolutely love Mallorca. And it's kind of like a magical realism-y book about a ghost who, but then it's also about like a reimagining of George Sand and Chopin. It reimagines these real life figures and then the ghost kind of falls in love with George Sand, maybe? Um, I don't know, I've not read any of Nell Stevens stuff. She's written like some non-fiction-y books about like literature um, that have been really popular. So yeah, I think it'd be interesting. So yeah, these are the three proofs that I have. I've been quite good. I haven't been requesting anything really recently. These are all stuff I've picked up from work. Uh, so yeah, it would be good to get on top of my proof life before I go into like what is usually a very busy time for proofs in the last half of the year. Then also, I do like my new releases, but I absolutely love my backlist. And I was thinking about some authors who I would like to read more from. So like some of my favorite authors who have books that I kind of feed myself their books because I don't want to run out. So it's been a while since I read Nishiguru. I think the last time I read Nishiguru was like over a year ago now. Um, and he still has loads of books in his backlist that I haven't read and he's one of my favorite authors. So I think I haven't picked this up yet, but I would like to read Nishiguru maybe this summer. And also there is one Zadie Smith book 
fiction book that I'm yet to read, which is The Autograph Man, which is her second published book, I think. And it's definitely one that I hear a lot less about compared to her other work, but I'm obsessed with Zadie Smith. So yeah, I think now might be the time. Again, it's been over a year, I think, since I read a new Zadie Smith, new to me anyway, fiction. So yes, I would like to read those. And then I have a couple of other books that I just, when I was looking at my shelves, I was like, okay, you know what? I'm really prioritizing you this summer. So we can add these two to the list of like Ferente Poirot, a mezzi and these two books as i guess my like final five tbr summer would really like to get to these books so they are 100 years of solitude by gabriel garcia marquez i picked this up in the airport because i'm just a sucker of buying books in the airport even though i knew i wouldn't read it on holiday because i just really love this edition um i hadn't seen it before the airport right let me put you on something i don't know if it's every airport but when i went flew from newcastle airport to go to mallorca there were so many books in the wh smith that i'm pretty sure weren't out yet or were like coming out soon but also i think because they have these maybe like international editions because you're in an airport it was brand new books that should have been in hardback in a paperback and i was like i don't have enough room in my bag yet and actually there wasn't that many that i'm like desperate to read but i was like maybe i just need to start get a job in the airport so that i can just access the wh smith like imagine these books that i'm desperate to read but i'm like i'll wait in till it comes out in paperback and then in the airport, they just sat there in a big fat paperback, the dream. Anyway, so I picked up this. This is a classic. It's a piece of Colombian literature, I believe. I've never read any Gabriel Garcia Marquez before, but I've obviously heard amazing things. I'm really interested in reading some more like Latin American literature. I know that like Britney read this fairly recently from Britney's books and loved it. And I'd say we have a very similar literary fiction taste. Yeah, I do like to make sure, well not make sure, but you know, put in some like longer books or some more like classic books in there. So yeah, I'd really like to read this this summer. And then speaking of longer books, the final book that I wanted to talk about in this video is Out by, I think it's Natsuko Karino. So this is like a very um, classic piece of Japanese crime fiction. As you can see, it's massive. It's in this gorgeous vintage Japanese editions. I got this for my birthday. It's always really recommended to me whenever I talk about like thrillers that I love or crime books that I love. Whenever I've looked into like classic, you know, the crime books you have to read, this comes up a lot. And it doesn't necessarily sound like my kind of crime book. So a group of women who work in a factory in the Tokyo suburbs, this one woman commits a crime. She can mess confesses her crime to her colleagues and they agree to help. And then it says like the police start asking questions. I sometimes don't enjoy that kind of someone has committed a crime and they're trying to get away with it book. I prefer like a really central mystery where I'm trying to work it out along with them, but it's come so highly recommended. It's been recommended to me so much. So I think that it's time that I get to this book. And yes, it is long, but apparently I've got all summer. So that goes on the list. So yeah, these are my like kind of tentative summer TBR plans. We've discussed a lot in this video. It's been very rambling, but please do let me know about any of the things I asked, about the book club, about some twisty thriller books. Let me know what you're thinking about reading this summer. Let's have a chat in the comments. Obviously, I would love if you subscribed. My Instagram, my storygraph are linked down below as always, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!